itself. So today we are working on uh, that 18 horsepower engine that I did a video on the other day. Uh, I'm going to be putting on, on my go-kart. I don't know if I said that before, but uh, when I got it running last time, it ran okay, and then we tried to pull it over later, and it just felt like it was real sticky. So today I'm going to be pulling everything off of it, checking out the cylinder walls, making sure they're okay, probably honing them real quick, and then yeah, we're going to throw it back together. So. Let's get to it. Alright guys, so I just want to show you what I mean by uh, the engine doesn't want to turn over right. It feels like it's kind of, it feels chunky, it shouldn't, but if I get that in there, I can't even hear that. I don't think it should sound like that. Yeah, engines aren't supposed to sound like that whenever they spin, so that's why I'm pulling it apart. Also, yesterday, whenever I got it home, I weighed it, and uh, it weighs 120 pounds, so that's what you get when you get a uh, cast iron, it says it on the side. It is the Tecumseh Extra Life cast iron, so that's what you get whenever you get a giant cast iron engine. So uh, yeah, let's get started on this thing, taking it apart. Alright guys, so it's about 45 minutes to an hour later, not 100% sure, but uh, we got everything off, it took a bit, uh, I had to look up a YouTube video to get that, uh, what is it, the 
valve springs out. I had to look up a YouTube video to figure that out. So, luckily, even though, uh, I don't know if y'all can see that, there is crap right there in the corners all around it. But, thankfully, it did not actually score the cylinder or anything. It's got a nice crosshatch pattern going on on it. So, that means it's okay. All that means that I gotta do is reassemble it, get all that stuff out of there, drain the oil, all that kind of thing. I'm gonna actually pressure wash this here soon and then we're gonna put it all back together. So, I'll let y'all see that and we'll get back to it. Alright guys, so as you can see, I've got the internals out of the engine. Uh, my dad and I were looking at this and we thought the issue was the rod bearings, which would be right here. Well, first off, I don't think there are rod bearings in these things, but um, there's a little weird wearing. I don't know if y'all can see that on a camera, but it's... It doesn't look bad. I'm gonna get my dad out here, ask him what he thinks. He's worked on vehicles a lot longer than I have. Uh, I don't know, the piston kind of felt a little weird, but the problem with this thing was is it felt really chunky while spinning it over. You couldn't like, I couldn't spin it over by hand while everything was in here. Even though there's no camshaft in it. I mean, camshaft lobes look okay. Those things are big, but I couldn't, like, I personally could not get this thing to spin over by hand. I had to tap it and even pry up on it. You'll see that in the uh, time lapse. But I don't know what's up with this thing. Doesn't look like there's any oil, or any oil, any uh, junk in the oil. Let me turn this off. There's a bit of crud in it. But it's old and it's rusted so it doesn't means it didn't come from the inside uh yeah, it definitely needs to be changed and dumped out but uh yeah i i don't know what's going on with this thing so i'm gonna get my father's opinion on this and then we'll try to rebuild it and see what it goes on i am noticing some weird stuff on the side of the piston Ooh. I did not notice that before. That right there, that's not good. I think that's the problem. You can see a little bit of it going on right there. That's, that should not be happening. So I think that was the problem though. My question is, if that was the issue, then why don't I see that? Oh, nope, I see it here now. I see a bit of a wear pattern, though this is still cross hatched down here and it's smooth all the way around so that's odd i'll bring that up to my father whenever he comes out here yeah I'm gonna get help from a quote-unquote expert redneck engineering expert so yeah i'll be right back all right guys so i 
conversed with my dad and we talked about what we think the issue is. Uh, I showed him the rod, which looked fine. And we looked at this and, you know, this is an odd wear pattern, but we think what ended up happening is it was ran without oil because it just sat somewhere and, you know, I was just excited to see if it ran. We'd actually run it a couple times before, like a, probably a few months before, before I made the video on it. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do what is known by roadkill fans as a dingle ball hone, except this doesn't have the ball, the ball on it. It's the O'Reilly's special of uh, <laughs> just flat things that touch the cylinder walls. So <laughs> that's all I can describe it as. But uh, yeah, we're gonna do that and get this thing going nice and good. So I'll get right to doing that. First off, if I can close this again, good lord. There we go. So, first off, I'm gonna do that. Then I'm gonna oil up the piston here, put it back in, check to see if it goes in and out easily. If it does not, then what I'm gonna end up doing is pulling it out, using this once more, make sure it does it. Honestly, just keep doing it till it works. So, yeah, <laughs> let's get to it. All right, guys. As y'all remember earlier on at the beginning of this video, this thing would not turn over easy and hardly turn over at all, even by hand. Now, I can just do this all day long. And it's incredible. So, yeah, this is part two of probably a three or four part series. Uh, tomorrow, I'm gonna be filming part three. And in that video, I'm gonna end up power washing this thing cleaning it up, putting the top end back on, and then we're gonna run it. I'll probably end up painting it as well because even though it looks cool rusty, I'd like it to last long. But uh, yeah, earlier I showed y'all the spark plug, which looks brand new. I was showing my dad on the bottom of the cylinder head, There's it's slightly black. So this thing probably wasn't run long at all. And it's probably because it was just a pain in the ass to start because it just wouldn't spin over. But now, with a little bit of machining, she spins over. I could almost, I it, it might need a bit more. Honestly, it probably does. But for now, it's easy enough to where I could probably pull start it just fine. So I'm gonna throw it. This will end up going into my go-kart, actually. And uh, you'll, you'll guys, you guys will get to see that. It's going to be quite a wild build, but that's going in there. It's going to have electric start and yeah, I was going with something, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this is easy enough to where I could probably pull start it. It, uh, oh yeah, I'm going to run it on that go-kart and whenever we run it on the go-kart, it'll definitely become easier to pull start as time goes. I, <laughs> I highly doubt there's going to be any blow by this thing is just too, it, it's just so tight in there. Like even right now with it machined out a little bit, or I should say honed out a little bit, it's still pretty tight in there. At the bottom, you can kind of get it to spin over on itself, but this is just 10 times easier than it was. So stay tuned for part three. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe and hit that notification button to see more of this will it run junkyard content and also hit it so you can stay in touch and see the go-kart build. I have a go-kart and it makes, it has a six and a half horsepower engine on it. So this is almost three times the amount of power of that go-kart. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, thank y'all for watching. Have a great day.